Hello, everybody. We hope you had a great holidays. Welcome back to the information sessions. This is information session number 13, and we're very excited for the guests we have today. And so now to introduce the session, I will pass it to Marcus. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah, so we're excited about this session today. Um, we think this will be a really uh, useful and a good resource for the community. And just to put some context here, um, many of you that as you're working on your environments for your SDG, um, you're bringing to life stories. And of course, the key assets that you need in your environment are gonna be these digital renderings of objects. Um, those objects could be a dog, they could be a tree, they could be a, a cup of coffee, they could be a special effect like wind or fire. And as you know, in these environments, you've probably learned that many of the platforms themselves like Engage or Spatial actually have libraries of assets, hundreds if not thousands of assets of all different types. So it's been quite, it's been quite turnkey over the, over the last 24 months to bring assets into your environments. And I say the last 24 months because before that, I can remember less than two years ago, in an environment like spatial, for example, they only had like six or seven objects to pull from. I mean, a very limited number. So you had to use LIDAR on your phone to scan assets and pull it in. You had to go to a marketplace like TurboSquid and buy assets. And then we covered this in, in a few other information sessions at a very high level. We mentioned the fact that you can actually create your own assets in platforms like, or applications like Blender, and even, I think at one point in one video, we mentioned that you could get into a, a software like Google Paintbrush, and you could actually be an artist and create your own assets. So we never dove deep into really how to do that um, creation of your own assets other than LiDAR. I think we had a session just on how to use your iPhone to scan something and use LiDAR using an app like Polycon or something. Um, but we never had a real... Uh, expert take us into kind of a detailed description of how to create your own artwork with the plethora of tools that are out there because there's actually some very sophisticated ones and for many of you that are artistic uh, you're going to love this and also I think there's something interesting about creating an environment where you're not just purchasing all the assets off some marketplace it's more authentic and custom made because the assets and the objects in the environment are ones you have actually created yourself. You know, you didn't have to buy them, you created them yourself and it's, it makes it more artistic and more homegrown, which I think adds an element of authenticity to the whole experience when you can tell someone that everything you see in here is something that I've created. Um, so with that said, we've got two guests, Asha and Sean. Um, we've posted the information session we did for Immerse UK uh, a couple weeks ago, we posted that on the YouTube channel. Many of you probably would enjoy watching that, but it was basically a description of the competition that we're running uh, to this community within the UK that Asha is the founder and leader of. And um, she will share with you, um, first of all, we we just able to share with Asha that we had a great uptick in terms of registrants for the competition from the UK community. Um, so that was great. There was a lot of people that watched that video and, and then joined the competition. And um, Asha is the one who shared with us uh, Sean and kind of his role. And why don't I pass it to you, Asha, just to, why don't you introduce real quickly the community that you run, your role, and then also you can introduce Sean who can take us through the, the topic today. Great, thank you so much, Marcus. Thanks for inviting us today. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so as Marcus mentions, I, I run Immerse UK, which is the UK government's innovation network for immersive technology professionals. So um, our role is really as a, a national network to help UK immersive businesses to scale and grow. And we do that by connecting um, the uh, businesses with the academic community and with the government. Um, we help companies to, uh, you know, create partnerships um, and we help them to uh, raise funding. Um, we do a, a whole bunch of different things uh, across the creative industries and kind of every sector that is impacted by the technology. So we work uh, in manufacturing, health, defense, 
AEC, all kinds of different spaces. Um, and we have like a really great kind of bird's eye view of, of um, kind of the whole XR ecosystem uh, in, in the UK. Um, we publish a number of different reports, um, our annual immersive economy report about the uh, landscape uh, in the UK on a yearly basis. Um, and that's just a, a number of things that we do. So it's a, it's a pretty big network. It's been running since 2016. Um, if anyone who is watching this is from the UK um, and wants to get involved, then please do reach out. Or if you're looking for any collaborators um, to maybe uh, apply with for this competition, then, then let us know. We can, we can help you out. Um, and I'd love to introduce Sean now, who is a long time friend of our network, um, Sean Rodrigo. Um, he's a London-based VR artist um, and speaker and kind of just a MacGyver of this whole industry. He's fantastic. <laughs> he does a, a, a tons of different work, um, you know, from live painting VR artwork to designing like prototypes in VR. And, um, he, you know, he uses a, a kind of every tool really available across augmented reality, 3D scanning, mocap, um, you know, building location-based installations. He builds maker spaces. Uh, so he's a real expert on um, using specifically 3D design tools like in VR, um, which we thought would be really valuable and useful uh, for this for this community. If you're looking to build something a bit more bespoke um, or, or unique just with your own creations. So um, I'll pass over to Sean to just also give you a bit more background on what he does and uh, a little demo of maybe some of these tools. And by the way, Sean, I think what will be interesting to this community is a, a lot of people in the community have gotten into this space through this competition, which is really at the right. heart of what we're, what we're trying to do in order to figure out how they can be part of this new economy and get employment and be an entrepreneur in this space. So looking at it from a career choice. And so it would also okay. be good for, it, you know, if you make a living, if this is your primary job versus your passion project, if this is actually your day job and what you do for a living, I think people will also be interested in your personal, a little bit about your personal story in terms of how did you, um, if one were to want to make a living and, and, and become a professional like you are in this space, what does that even mean? What's that look like? What are the skills required? What's the training required? What, who, who hires you? You know, what type of projects do you do? <laughs> totally. I think that'd totally, be helpful. Totally. Well, so no problem at all. Um, one second, sorry. Bless you. That's better. Sorry, I didn't want to cough in everyone's ear. Um, so thanks very much for the intro, Asha. Um, I will pay you later for saying all those nice things about me. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, um, Asha and I are both based in the UK. We are uh, obviously, she's a Canadian and I'm an Australian, um, but uh, uh, most people can't tell the difference between Australian and, uh, and England anyway. So um, <laughs> my uh, my background is, uh, is actually uh, previous to working in virtual reality, uh, which I do uh, every day. I have got an, a nice studio that I work out of as well. And I kind of dabble in uh, making physical stuff as well as an artist. Um, but uh, day to day, yeah, virtual reality is the, the main focus of my work. Um, and previous to this work, I was actually working in film and television. So I was, uh, all I ever wanted to do was work in film and television. I always had um, film and television in mind. I wanted to be, a, uh, you know, continue to be a filmmaker and make big blockbuster films and stuff. And that's all I ever wanted to do. And when I moved to the UK, um, I, I moved here for that. Uh, and pursued uh, that that space. And then once I started picking up a VR headset and sort of starting to see the capacity that um, or the potential that virtual reality had for me to take my ideas that I have and then make them in a matter of hours versus days, um, which is what film and television can be like. It's a, a, a long process. Uh, it's expensive and it takes a whole team of people. Uh, well, as soon as I was able to pick up a headset and then start making something in front of my own eyes, uh, I was hooked. Uh, and that's kind of what uh, this technology is potentially has the opportunity to be something that's really uh, it's kind of freeing. It, it takes away the need for you to necessarily have uh, you know, a, a huge film set to be able to tell an idea or a story. It takes away the idea of needing to have um, anything but just the equipment to start with. You know, you you, you don't need to be um, working with crews of people to make it. So it's really optimistic in that way. Um, so there were a lot of questions there, but I think I can remember some of them. Uh, Career-wise, I mean, ultimately a creative person... A creative person is going to be um, employable in any other sort of creative space. When I was younger, I thought I have no other skills. If I can't make it in advertising, film and television, 
I'm going to not have any money. Um, but the reality is that it's transferable. As much as um, people think, oh, well, if you're a, a painter, you can't be a sculptor, you definitely can. Um, you know, once you've got that creative muscle, that ability to um, see a creative solution to something, see a story. Um, okay, uh, see a story and uh, to be able to um, work in a creative way that's an easy way of being able to take those same skills and apply them to somewhere different. So that might be um, if you are creative and you are working in a field like, uh, you know, architecture, you could definitely move into something like uh, immersive technology being AR or virtual reality. Um, and then there's also lots of opportunity for young enthusiastic people to pick up this technology and do something really exciting with it that otherwise hasn't been done before so you guys have the advantage of being large i mean i assume a lot of the people on the call are going to be um are going to be young and have bought been born with this technology in their hand um, and that's a real advantage that you have to some of the older generations who, who had to learn it from scratch or had to learn it later on in life um, so there's a huge opportunity to just do very simple small calculated projects that help you build up that portfolio and that skill level uh, such as making uh, filters for augmented reality applications like tilt uh, sorry so like um uh, uh, Snapchat or Instagram or TikTok, if you, if that's a possibility. Um, and those are really good ways of getting um, practice, creating something exciting that potentially will build up an audience. Um, and then from there, you can always go and try and knock on people's doors and say, I could make you a, a filter for your company, or I could make you a um, an a, 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 a augmented reality product demo. Um, and then that's a way, a really good way of getting work. It's really trying to see um, the simple uh, sort of an effective uses of the technology and then try to leverage that. So uh, like I said, social media is a really good place to start because it's a way of getting your, uh, your artwork seen, um, starting there and then doing as many small projects as possible that will build up a body of work and a, uh, a level of skill. Does yeah, that so, answer yeah, that's some helpful. of the questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if, in terms of like trying to pursue this as a profession, those are some of the areas that where you see market demand right now, as far as companies oh, definitely. or companies that will actually hire someone with this skill set. Let's let's uh, pivot into me as a as a competitor in this competition, building out a space for a sustainable development goal and building a VR environment. And yes. um, I, I think what would be helpful, Sean, is. So again, like I was describing before, different options for the types of objects and visuals that I put in my environment. I imagine that most people in this competition using the library digital that comes within these applications. We've been highlighting applications like Engage. I think Engage has upwards of 2,000 objects, everything from a flying saucer to a coral reef to uh, you know, an effect like fire or rain or mist, um, et cetera. Can you bring us into this other world of, of opportunities and options in terms of how I can bring in and create digital objects? Definitely, definitely. So that kind of gets more to where my kind of expertise is, is in. So um, there's nothing wrong with using pre-built assets if you are uh, just building out an idea, but there is a limitation to that. There is a limitation in the respect that you don't get complete freedom of what it looks like and you don't get to necessarily find exactly what you want. You might end up with something that's somewhat what you're after, um, but using other people's assets is, is not always going to give you the best result. And ultimately, um, if you create it yourself, there's a, there's a skill level there, there's an employability there. Um, so there's lots to be said for creating your own assets. Um, one of the, the things that I use uh, is a tool uh, which, it, it, well, a series of tools which I will call um, immersive uh, creative technology or immersive uh, tools. And those are um, tools that allow you to create the artwork with your hands and the headset in virtual reality. So instead of using a keyboard and a mouse uh, to design something in, say, Blender or Cinema 4D, or um, any of these other tools, you create the artwork inside of the VR headset. So if you have access to a virtual reality um, uh, headset, 
there are a number of tools that you can use that will allow you to paint, sculpt, design, uh, and plan up your ideas. Um, and they will potentially be a much more accessible tool for you. And I say that because it means it's basically the easiest way of designing something in 3D is to do it in 3D. So we're all used to seeing um, a, you know, a chair in real life. And when we try, we design a chair, um, let me see if I can use this, uh, this, uh, this uh, light that I've been using to think. But if you imagine my hand is tracing a chair, you, or maybe actually what I'll do is I'll draw it on a pair of paper. That's probably a bit too abstract. I'm used to drawing in the air. I apologize for this. If you're drawing a chair in real life, um, you're likely to, in, in the real world, to draw a chair that looks something like, like this. It's a flat chair. But in the real world, instead of designing something that looks like this from the front and then on the side, it disappears. There is no chair there. There's no 3D chair. Within a tool like Google Tilt Brush or Open Brush now, which I'm, I'm going to get into a little bit more, you can design a chair like you're tracing it with your finger or you're drawing the edges and you draw towards you. And that's the, the seat down for the, for the chair legs. And then the back is like that. So instead of doing just a force perspective draw drawing of a chair, you're drawing a three-dimensional version. And that's a lot more intuitive and a lot more easy to start understanding than the normal way, which is to do it on a flat screen and, 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 more, force and more fun. <laughs> and a lot more fun. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So there's a couple of tools out there. Um, the, the, like the first one I mentioned, I don't know if you want me to... to Flick some uh, some visuals up on screen or not? Um, so yeah, that go ahead. People I understand think what I'm people, talking about. Yeah, I think to give people a little bit of an idea of it. Also, like, how do you access these tools? Do they cost anything? Totally, totally. Can you see my screen now? That's yes. the wrong screen. One second. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, yep. tell me when you can see my screen. Okay, cool. Yep. So this is my website um, and you can see just in this background that there is a video of me painting in um, OpenBrush. Um, and OpenBrush is that tool that I mentioned, which, which is a, uh, allows you to be able to paint um, in the air and create 3D assets. Now, this is a tool that's available for free. If you type in OpenBrush into any of the, the stores for the, the headset that you own, um, you should be able to come up with open brush. You can download it and then start painting um, 3D objects in 3D space. And the reason for why that's really good is it means that you can create these worlds. And these are some of the examples of worlds I've created. I just finished this one on the far left. It's a uh, artwork for, for Meta um, that I did in Belgium. Uh, I've done projects for car companies like Bentley and, and uh, Mercedes amongst many others. Um, and then also done, have made lots of projects overseas as well. So um, these projects were all created by hand. So there's a handcraftedness uh, similar to illustration or sign writing uh, that, 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 that is, it allows you to be able to create something that's quite nice and organic. Um, and it's not necessarily something that only creative people can do. It's something that if you're a, a, a producer or, you're, or a designer or say an engineer, um, you could pick one of these tools up and, and at least explain your ideas really easily and then work with the team to make an immersive world. Um, let me see if I can flick up um, one of these videos. This one's one of my favorite ones. This is a, a, a quite a popular one, which was for Three Mobile, um, who are a uh, telecommunications company here in the UK. I'm was this now? Was this was this asset or this creation of art? Was it used by your client? Um, it was, in, yeah. And was it used in a music video? Was it used in a, how was it used by them? So, so the you'll see in a second, it was actually, so this is a piece of video content. So this is a, um, a, a normal flat screen image, similar to what the, the hackers are going to be providing to you guys in, um, in, in video form. It's a YouTube video. And I painted the environment that this gentleman here sees in the background um, at, behind him, but he also can walk through the artwork that I painted. So bear in mind, everything that you're about to see on screen behind him that isn't this, this uh, older gentleman um, is something that I made in the headset without a keyboard or a mouse at all. So I'll play and the, old, and the older gentleman is a consumer, a targeted consumer of the company that you built this for that paid you to do it? No, no, actually, he's, I don't think he is actually. I think he's a little bit older than the demographic, but he is... 
he is it's a good story nonetheless so he's okay. in his 70s and he's never used virtual reality before when you close your eyes and you imagine a happy place what's the first thing that you think of i think of a garden and in this garden I can just imagine various flowers and they grow. And also there's a fruit tree and a lot of birds visit the garden. Can it's you hear permanently that? permanently sunshine, there's yes. no rain and there's a hammock. What we could have is a, a lion's head. So I'm painting, I'm painting this world and then we put him in the headset. So this content was uh, what they would call branded content. Um, it's designed specifically to allow a company to create content that people like watching. Um, and then that feeds back to the, the benefit the brand in the long run, because when someone's going to go to look for a mobile phone, they'll remember a piece of content that they enjoyed, which was paid for by this telecommunications company called Three. Um, so we put Stephen in the headset and, and we let him walk around his dream oh, garden. Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at this beautiful blue butterfly. It's just, the colour is just, oh, who's that on there? On top of the, who's that? That's just amazing. Look at that. Incredible. All these stripy things. Oh, there's my hammock. Very tempting to actually sit down. Oh, and I've got a headrest as well. Oh, look at those plums. <laughs> that was absolutely but, but, amazing. The clay carp were beautiful and the butterflies, the mind just goes into a world of fantasy. <laughs> it was the most fascinating experience I've ever had. So that's the sort of thing that that I get paid to do. Um, it's a it's a very privileged job. I, ha I have to admit, um, I I never sort of pretend that it's um, working in a mine or anything like that. Um, but this is then just an extension of what I've always done. I've always created worlds. I've always gone in and created you know, kind of rich story environments or worlds. And now with this tool that's free to use, you can pick it up and design entire universes that people can walk around in. And one of the best things about it is there are platforms such as uh, uh, VR chat, um, that one of the ones that I know of, and there are probably a couple others, um, which will allow you to put this into their metaverse platforms. And then from there, people can walk around inside of them, not just this one gentleman um, in, inside of my painting. Um, I'm going to show you the website specifically for OpenBrush. Um, and I've got a video I'm going to show you in a second with the creators um, who are uh, well, the creators or the developers behind OpenBrush. Uh, OpenBrush is available on all of these different platforms, including um, Viveport, uh, Oculus Quest, and then SideQuest and Steam. If you have a headset that's plugged in or if you're working with a university and you need to use their headsets, um, it'll be available on one of those. And um, as you, you download your, you know, you create your assets, you can also upload it to their um, their gallery, which they have um, a gallery of of, of artwork, um, which is which is quite exciting um, to be able to host your artwork online. Um, and here's some of the artwork that's been created um, using this tool. Um, and so there's yes, there's just so much. It's quite a. It is like I've gone into some of the paintbrush like environments that were created by others, and the level. I mean, it really is a. A brand new art form i think it's going to be i think it's starting to be seen as and it should be seen as one of the most respected forms of art because you because you're doing it in three dimensions basically you're making a painting in three dimensions right so it's it yeah, adds it's, a, it's a lot of work <laughs> yeah it's it a lot of work sometimes layer for sure of complexity question a couple questions for you sean when you're in this sure, platform can you then pull in like if you wanted to intermix this with some assets that you purchased from turbo squid can you pull in your own assets or assets you that can, you purchase you can within reason um it's not primarily built for that um but it's not impossible it's harder to do when you're using the the standalone headsets uh just mainly because those standalone standalone headsets uh would involve you loading assets in so i'm not sure if it works on the the quest um to upload your own assets into it. But I know for sure that there are versions of this program that do do that. And I have seen people do that. Yeah. So probably um, but there are other, 
Well, I was just going to say, Sean, that probably what you would want to do then is you'd want to create your artistic creation in this environment, save it as a file, and then import that file into one of those more robust metaverse platforms, Engage or Spatial or one of those, where you then can mix it up. You know, then you can have your avatars in there. You can have other objects that are part of their library in there as well, if you wanted to mix the two. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're, 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 as with everything, there's always a compatibility question. So you've got to find the platforms that are most compatible with with certain tools, and that's down to the pipelines that they use. Uh, but to give you an idea, if you are building a prototype for the hat for the hack, and you just want to show what the world is going to look like and what the functionality would be of your your prototype, then that's purely uh, possible within uh, Tilt Brush itself or Open Brush itself. Uh, you can export a video that you've recorded inside of it of either moving around holding a camera with your hand, or you can uh, send a camera through on a path like a like a camera dolly. Um, and that's a really good way of doing it. Uh, of course, if you want to get a little bit more you know, kind of, uh, kind of get a, f- a bit further with it. You can take these assets and put them into in a, a game engine called Unity. Uh, Tilt Brush and Open Brush were built on Unity, so they're compatible best with Unity. And you can bring the assets from Tilt Brush or Open Brush into Unity. Uh, and then there are a bunch of assets online that you can uh, for things like shaders and uh, more complicated technical side of things but then once you've got that into unity you can start adding things like interactivity and you can add physics you can add all the exciting things that game engines um generally build uh and then the caveat for this is of course that all tools have limitations on what they can can and cannot use so if your expectation is to build something that's really immersive you have to think about that somewhere in the in the process but for the purpose of your hack um creating a a massive artwork that explains your uh, you know, sustainable development goal um, and how you might help the people understand one of these goals is purely uh, possible within Tilt Brush or Open Brush within its own um, uh, program itself. So you wouldn't even necessarily need to bring it into uh, one of those platforms, but you you could definitely do some research. I know that VR Chat is uh, one of the platforms where Tilt Brush and Open Brush are more compatible. Uh, but We're- being in, being said that, saying saying that, sorry. No, just go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh, there are a number of other platforms that you can use, which do have a little bit less limitations when it comes to uh, the specifics of where you use the tool. Uh, so there's two programs that I'll talk, uh, I'll show you about. Uh, one is called, um, which one is called Gravity Sketch. Uh, Gravity Sketch is also developed in the UK, um, and uh, this is a tool that is a, is a little bit more like a design. Uh, tool similar to a program called Rhino, um, but it also has some lots of familiarities with anyone who's used a 3D design prep package. And you can do really beautiful, uh, you know, polygon based designs that can be then used in something like Engage fairly easily. Um, and that's because these are tools that have are, are used for more sort of CGI design, less and less like a painting, which is what Open Brush is it's more of a painting medium. So uh, Gravity Sketch is, one, is, a, is a really robust and a bit more technical, but a, a, there's a lot you can do with it. And then also um, there's one other tool which I wanted to talk about today called Shapes XR. And Shapes XR is really good because it has almost like a, its own multiplayer, you know, metaverse layer where you can create prototypes using pre-existing assets like ones from Turbo Squid. Um, there's a website called Poly Pizza. Uh, if you want to Google poly pizza, that's another website you can get assets from, which are low poly, which means they work well within a VR headset. Um, and then uh, Shapes XR is really good for designing the idea of a space. So you might want to create a model that's almost like a cardboard miniature cutout version of your idea, bring that into Engage and then have people explore it and give you feedback, things like that. Um, mm-hmm. So there's lots of exciting things that we can I do. Think and I've Oh, yeah, I think it'd be interesting. I, Gravity Sketch is such is getting to be such a, a brand name in the space. Maybe you could Definitely. give an overview of of Gravity Sketch, which, like you just described, it's one level, it's one level up versus Open Brush in terms of sophistication of what you can actually do in that environment. Definitely. So um, I've worked with a, a bit with Open Brush, uh, sorry, with um, Gravity Sketch in the past because they are so close. Um, and was one of the first or one of the few people to experience their multiplayer functionality. So like with Shapes XR, uh, uh, sorry, Gravity Sketch does also have the ability to have 
uh, teams of up to four people for the free version and then more for a paid version uh, where you can design a car or a pair of shoes or sorry i've got alexa stop alexa stop okay it's telling me that i've got uh this call uh, so uh yes the idea alexa alexa stop Okay, if you can cut that out for me, that would be great. That makes me look very silly. <laughs> uh, my, my whole studio is, is set up as um, Alexa enabled. Um, so Gravity Sketch is really good because it allows you to be able to design um, more sort of traditional designed models, but it also still has that three-dimensional um, aspect and also has the multiplayer aspect. Um, a lot of people um, use this in the sort of fashion and automotive design worlds. And those are the worlds, uh, sort of industries that have picked up this tool quite well, um, which means that there's lots of opportunity for young designers to come on and, and work with a brand um, and say, hey, let's create a, pro a, you know, a prototype car or a prototype pair of sneakers. Um, and industries where there are avid fans so sneakerheads are huge there's lots of money in sneakers if you can design something that's really cool and then 3d print it or then uh, hand it off to somebody else uh, to design you could end up making a real career for yourself as a designer so here are some of the tools you can see that you, you can move the meshes around on the car um, and then you can bring in assets um, and you can even work on a flat screen to start with and move into a vr headset um, i believe gravity sketch is also free um, in its, uh, it has a free version, so you can use the free version and then decide if you want to pay for it otherwise. Um, and it's available on most other of the platforms as well. So that's a really good can one you, to have. A look can you at. Um, can you animate? Home. Can you animate? Does it give you functionality to then animate the object so you can make the wheels look like they're turning? Or is no, that not at this stage. No, not at this stage. Um, most of these tools, uh, because um, spatial computing or, or um, immersive technology as a whole is fairly new, we're kind of still not quite there when it comes to the the processing power for animation, but there are tools out there that will allow you to do that, um, but you they will be separate to sort of um, native VR applications. But there are lots of ways of being able to do of do that. You basically create the tool, the the car in Gravity Sketch, you make the car, the wheels a separate layer, and then you bring it into a, into a traditional pipeline like Blender or Maya or Cinema 4D, and then you animate the wheels in, in those tools if you want to. Or I'm sure that you could probably do it in some of the metaverse platforms themselves there are some sort of rudimentary animation tools within those platforms as well like a uh, rec room and all that sort of stuff as well so sean what, um john real quickly is your background obviously there's an artistic skill set here did you were you a painter when you were younger no you... no not at all not at all actually i so i i did draw but it was i was relatively uh, cartoony in the, my drawing technique. Um, the actually, what's quite funny is I actually almost failed 3D modeling class at university. Um, so I, I was not particularly good at drawing perspective and I'm not, wasn't particularly good at 3D. Um, and I actually wasn't really um, that into kind of high technology as a whole. Uh, but this technology changed all of that because it allowed me to do things that felt more natural for the uh, a, a, a approach designing without needing all these highly technical um, keyboard shortcuts and things like that. So um, for instance, the tool that you can see on screen right now, Shapes XR, um, if you want to create a drum, which is what one of the characters is doing on this in this video, uh, you grab a cylinder off the menu, you put it into the world and you adjust its size. There's no short keyboard shortcuts or multiple um, scripts that you have to write. It just happens. And, and, and that's one of the best things about these tools. Yeah, that's really interesting because basically what you're saying is because i i was i thought you were going to say well sure i was like you know uh went to art school and was a painter and all that so that's no, that's no, really interesting that that basically says that for anyone that, because it's dealing with your spatial cognitive ability it's a little bit more natural people shouldn't think that oh i have to be an artist in order to do what sean does get into one of these environments and see how intuitive it is because you might find out like you found out that you can become a, a digital design creator and artist that maybe was not, maybe you didn't have the competency or you didn't have the, your brain didn't work such that you could learn that with keystrokes and mouses and things like that, because it was, it became a little bit more technical and remembering, you know, special Definitely. features of your keyboard to where when it just unleashed yourself into an environment where you're able to design things the way they exist in the real world, perhaps many people 
actually don't even realize they have that skill set because it's so intuitive and they can get into oh, the totally. space. Totally. So if you're a, um, a person who is into fashion and you know what things are meant to look like on a, on a human body, there's no reason for why this technology can't help you reproduce that skill, but in a 3D world. So being able to create a mannequin uh, and then dress the mannequin with clothing uh, using one of these tools is, is potentially going to be uh, allow you to use that skill. As I mentioned earlier on the call, a creative power or a creative skill that you have in another industry can move into this technology. And I think you just have to have that openness to think, all right, well, I do know what design looks like, or I do know what a good pair of shoes looks like. Let me have a go at designing my own pair of shoes and drawing the contours of the shoes uh, might actually not be as difficult as you thought. And, and originally with things like uh, you know, some of these tools, you can draw a line and then go in and edit that line until it's perfect. So if you've got the patience and you've got the time to to um, sit down and have a go at some of these tools, I recommend it highly because you might find that you have an entirely uh, new way of being able to express yourself that you wouldn't have had beforehand where uh, computers, you had to work for the computer. And then with this, sometimes this technology is called um, spatial computing. Um, and the, the, the way that that works is that it's 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 computing, it's using computers, but it's using your physical space, using your body. So in a way, the computer is part of you and not the other way around, um, which makes yeah, it a lot that. more easy and a lot more appealing, if that makes, makes sense. Yeah, I love that. Um, I mean, we've been, yeah. we've been emphasizing to this community that the reason why any skill level can participate in this competition is because building environments in virtual realities become a non-coding coding, right? Definitely. You can you can create in these environments without any writing any technical code, which is interesting because it's it's basically like, it's akin to designing and developing the next generation of the internet, but this generation of the internet can be created and developed by anyone because it doesn't require you to get into a website and understand how to use HTML or JavaScript, right? Exactly. That's what, so that's the ba that's the normalizer of this, which of this next generation of the internet, and you're just you're showing how even from a graphic design perspective, because we, sh we showed people how you can use a tool like Engage to like 3D versions of PowerPoint to actually create a whole experience and a story around an SDG. You're basically mm -hmm. showing us that you don't have to get into the technical side of a tool like Blender or, or one of these other graphic design artist tools. You could, but if you didn't want to, um, because it had too much technical uh, competency you had to learn, you could do what you do, which is pick up your virtual paintbrush and get in there and create these assets yourself. Do you want to just spend a, a few minutes letting people know it's not just a paintbrush? I mean, you have glitter effects, you have spray paint effects. I mean, you really have any type of you have a you have Definitely. a whole. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the benefits of, of virtual reality is that there isn't a lot of limitation. So you have unlimited resources. You're never going to run out of paint. You're never going to run out of space, physical space. Um, and there are a number of uh, tools that will allow you to have um, even more tools than what you would have in real life. So, for instance, with Tilt Brush or, or Open Brush, you can paint in light or fire. Um, you can create uh, bubbles. You can have all these effects which are really kind of uh, magical. And it gives you a really beautiful cinematic um, effect, which is why a lot of people do choose Open Brush um, over, say, a traditional modeling tool because it allows them to create something that looks quite moody and quite uh, real uh, because it has that cinematic magic look to it versus something that's that's kind of white cards or, or gray polygons. Um, but one of the things I wanted to just pick up really quickly with this last this last tool, and I'm just going to share it for you on screen, um, it's something that you should definitely have a look at, the Shapes XR, which I was kind of mentioned before. Shapes XR is really good because it's it's not necessarily about artists it's not an artist tool as such. It's not specifically focused on making um, painting sh shapes, for instance, like open brushes. Uh, shapes XR is actually a really good tool for explaining your ideas and building that idea up with other people. So that's one of the other aspects that you might want to look at as a career is that there are t entire careers um, in things like user experience or user interface design. And that could be someone who's very technical, someone who's very detail oriented, someone who is a good listener, someone who's able to take people's feedback and then implement it into making something better. And these tools here, you can see it's it's design, but it's also prototyping and communication. 
And one of the things that I've noticed when I was working as a creative in advertising and places like that is sometimes the best idea doesn't win because it's not well explained. So if you can explain your idea and the client can see what they're paying for and they can understand what's going to happen and they feel confident in your ability to do that, that will be what wins your work and what wins uh, over pitches. Um, so I talk a lot with uh, small, medium enterprise businesses um, and sometimes even larger ones about how to get their ideas out of their head and into the real world so that other people can enjoy them and understand them. And then that's one of the main things that a lot of people struggle with is, oh, well, I'd love to make this application, but I can't because I'm not a developer. So with these tools, with, with Shapes XR, you're able to create something, uh, create even if it is a really quick sort of scamp. Um, if this is kind of akin to Figma for social media or, or interface design um, in the respect that there are these platforms out there now that will allow you to design an application for a mobile phone or a, a series of, of uh, social media assets without needing to be either a web developer or a graphic designer. And this is a tool that will allow you to be able to build something and explain it to a team of developers, developers and then they can use those assets uh, to start building an experience without needing to do any investment straight up. So take your ideas in a headset, show someone in a funding body and they'll say, great, that's amazing. Uh, we get it. And then, and then that's a potentially a really good place for you as well. Um, yeah. So it's like for product for, so this is you prototyping a deliverable for a client. Exactly. Um, yeah. Prototyping, but also play testing. So for instance, um, giving the headset to an audience, someone who you think is going to pay for it and saying, what do you think? Did you understand this? Where did you think you needed to be looking? How did you do this? And getting that feedback and then changing it and then not needing to pay anyone to change it. So that's really exciting because you can go in, create a level and say, where do you think you need to be looking? And if everyone gives you the wrong answer, you need to change your prototype to make it more intuitive for people, uh, especially in this field, because there are no set rules of how to do something. So you're kind of building, a lot of people are building the language that we use to communicate ideas uh, as you're going. So you might decide that you need to create a mechanism that helps people understand something a bit better. And you can do that within the tool and not have to pay for a separate person to do that for you or make any of those changes for you, which is really good and should make people quite excited because it means that you don't need to have a team of people to be able to do that. That's great. Sam, I, you're an art major. What do you think about these platforms? I have a little bit of experience with Gravity Sketch, which I really enjoy using as well. I have yet to try Open Brush, but as an art major, I find these tools so fascinating just because it gives you all the possibilities within art. And as Sean mentioned, there's no limitations. So there's so many things you can think of. You can bring to life almost anything you want. And so I feel like it just gives a little sense of freedom of creating something in a virtual world where it can be anything you really need it to be. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Well, we, well, Sean, first of all, thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Um, I think this will be really helpful for the community. I think there's probably a lot of people in our community that are competing on this competition that don't even realize that there are these productivity tools and these artistic tools even out there. And um, really? I'm hoping that I'm hoping that there's a handful of people or more than a handful of people in our community out of everyone competing in this competition that actually their entirely built experience around the SDG to build education, empathy, and awareness is in one of these environments where even if it is a little bit more abstract, you know, this is part of the reason why we're doing this is we're experimenting with ways in VR to educate, build empathy and awareness around social issues and causes, in this case, the SDGs. And I hope Great. that we see some, I hope we see some people experiment with this tool in some examples, because it doesn't always have to be you know, a lifelike, realistic experience that you go into, sometimes doing things abstract or doing things that are more artistic, maybe that's the thing that cracks the code on getting someone to engage with a social cause, you know, and in, in, in feeling, Definitely. yeah, for sure. Definitely. And that's something that I'm working on at the moment. I've got a, a project that I need to build, which is a, a vision board or a concept art for a garden that they want to create in a currently disused um, industrial estate um, and the idea is to create something that's really beautiful that allows people to move through it and uh, pull up information about specific parts of the plan um, and help people buy into that dream of what this is going to be and I think 
Uh, one, I've got a video which I'm going to pass on to you guys. I'm not sure if you wanted to tap this onto the end of this one or you got people can watch it online. But one of the things that the creators of, of um, uh, Shapes XR and the developers of OpenBrush kind of bring up is that the metaverse needs to be a collaboration between technologists and designers. It can't just be technology for the sake of it. It needs to be a place where people have designed the world to make things more accessible, to make things more magic, to more beautiful. A world without, or at least a, a movement uh, without designers and artists is, 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 not, is not, you know, doesn't happen. If you think of any great um, uh, sort of theological or, uh, you know, political movement in history, it's always come with uh, an art style and uh, art and music and, and all these things in with it from the Bauhaus through to some of the different revolutions there's always been artists and designers involved so I think to have platforms without artists and, and designers being actively involved is a real mistake and I think we are the ones that will help make this space uh, better more exciting more accessible um, and more meaningful yeah why well, I would even go as far as to say it needs to be led by that skill set you know in with if you also add a storyteller and someone that's good at communicating you know, communication Definitely. skills, storytelling, yeah. artists, designers, they're, they're, they're the, I think they're the, um, um, they need to be the ones in driving the, the experiences, the technologists are the, just the ones that figure out how to enable that creativity. Definitely. Especially I mean, in I our collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, especially in our competition, if the goal is empathy, education, and awareness, you know, empathy comes through emotion and you know some type of magical spell that you can create in these environments to get people to really uh, have an empathetic view towards a social cause. And you're not gonna get that by showing them a PowerPoint slide. You're gonna get that, that by taking them through some imaginary experience. So definitely, well, listen, definitely. Um, do you wanna give the, I know for the video that you re referred to, do you wanna list the, um, do you wanna say where exactly how to get access to that video? And then we'll also post it as a, as a in the notes to this um definitely, this YouTube definitely. Video. i i mean I'll, I'll send through the link through to to sam and uh you can post this in in conjunction with the um with the uh with this talk um the video we've produced is is an interview with two of the different parties so open brush and shapes xr who i mentioned there's a little bit of um, examples of some of the work that i've done with some of these tools and uh, also the promotional um, sort of material that they use to show what the tool is. Uh, but it's also a really good conversation because it's a conversation about why they do what they do, what they wish people would do with it, and then into the future, how artists can get more involved and, and where they can yeah, um, spend great. their energy being excited about this technology is it on as your, a whole. Is, it on, is, it, is that video linked from your website? So if people went to your website, they could find the video or... Uh, it can be for sure. I can put it somewhere on my website, but I think it'll probably go on my social media um, uh, channels and um, I'm sure Sam can can link it as well, but I'll, I'll okay. pass through all my details. Uh, no problem okay. at all. <laughs> my website right, was up before, so you can copy the URL from there as well. Okay. Well, that sounds great. We really appreciate it. This is really helpful information. Um, I'm going to, now I'm excited to go in and, and look at some of your work. So I'm going to try to find some of it. <laughs> some, some of those experiences looked amazing. Um, fantastic thank you so but, much yeah thanks for the time today thanks sam and i no know problem. asha had to drop at the top of the hour so thank you to her too bye guys thank you bye bye, -bye.